G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I've been machining up some parts for the old Shorblin and I got a bit carried away, a bit careless, and uh, I crashed the carriage on the lead screw covers. As I've said, it's very easy to do this. I changed the cutter, forgot that this didn't have the overhang, that the reach that the other one had, and ran out of travel. So, that's one of the major disadvantages with lead screw covers. You, <laughs> you can easily get caught out. I must have broken dozens of them over the years. But it's an easy way to, to, uh, to fix it. It's, it's no big deal. So, I mean, what happens? Well, you're machining away and you hear those change gears suddenly change tune and you hear that motor start to labour and you know straight away, uh-oh, I run out of travel. So you hit the stop button. Is the damage done or did, it, did you save it in time? Well, you soon find out. Put in the drive. Oh yeah, look at the driver. You know, look at that. It's going. No, it's not. That's just the, the, the drag on the two parts. Um, that's just the drag on the two parts. Pulling it along, but the, the shear pin is broken. So, what happens when the shear pin breaks? Well, hopefully not much, because that's why they put them there. If you haven't got a shear pin and you crash the carriage, you've got a good chance of doing some serious damage. Particularly so if you try and crank it back, you know, people pull on the old, pull on the old uh, half nut lever and wind it back, I'm going to get it back. Well, when you do that, you just stuff it up completely because you bend all the bloody pinion gears, the teeth on the rack, and, you know. Yeah, I've heard some sorry tales. If you ever do crash up against the carriage completely. You leave it in gear and you just reverse the chuck direction and that will wind the thing back. Okay, I'm diverging, but that's what you do. You never ever try and disconnect it when it's under tension. You always reverse the drive direction and it will un unbind itself and then you can move it back and see what damage you've done. So, shear pins, got to happen. If you haven't got a shear pin, you're looking like a disaster waiting to happen. So what happens when the shear pin breaks? Well, I'll show you. When the shear pin breaks, the carriage is trying to go this way. So that all the load on the shear, that's if your machine's washed the chuck, which it usually would be doing. So all the thrust on the lead screw is going that way. So when it breaks, not only does it break the shear pin, it will push the, it will push the lead screw out this way more. And you can see how it's come out past the end of the the bush there, it shouldn't be there, it should be back in about the same distance inside. So the lead screw has actually gone out this way, you've got to drag it back for anything to line up. Well, it's a very simple procedure, I'll show you how you do it. First off, wind your carriage back, take it out of drive for this, wind your carriage back. And then it's a matter of pull your lead screw covers out of the way so you can work on it. If you've got them, if you haven't got lead screw covers, well, you can not worry about this step. So I've got to get these folder back so that I can get to the shear pin, which is up this end. I've got a special bit of wire I use on this because I've done it so many times that... There we go. I'll have a... I have my own hold me back gadget here for the lead screw cover. So we can just put that back like that. Okay, we'll have a close look at the lead screw end now, at the um, shear pin end now. So you can see what's happened here. The shear pins snap, which is what it's designed to do. There's two shear pins on this actually. There's one here and there's another one here. This one is cast steel, this one is bronze. They were both cast steel, but this one broke, so I just put bronze in. That's just bronze brazing rod. But it does a good job. It shears nicely, and the, the end bits will just drop off. They shouldn't be in there, they'll come out. So now it's just a matter of punch out the, the bit that's in there. Gently. 
That's one of the little homemade punch that we made in another video. It comes in handy for this sort of work. You can just get in there. Okay, so pins out. The pins out on both of these. Get this out the way. So you can see. So now it's a matter of got to bring the shaft back and turn the gear train to line the holes up. Very simple. Right, to do this, all you do is engage your half nuts and then use the carried hand wheel and you see you as you've locked the, the lead screw you can now pull it up into position with the with the handle on the carriage. Before I get it right up we'll line them up. Now to line them up, whoops, to line them up all we do is we'll just turn the chuck. I should have actually done this before I put it in. Alright. Oh, I'll have to go right around now. So you can see what's happening. Alright, I'll have to just put my little punch in here just to stop the lead screw turning. Hope you can see this alright. Right, those two holes are pretty much in line, so now we'll feed it in with the hand wheel again. Right. To hook up my gadget again. My little wire, I keep that out of the way. So now they're lined up. You can see they're in position. Right. And now it's just a matter of make up a, a new uh, shear pin, a little bit of bronze rod, knock it in, and we're good to go. It's as simple as that. The whole job will take a couple of minutes at most. So, to make up a shear pin, you just get some bronze rod, bronze brazing rod. Oh, get it close enough. Get your bolt cutters. Gotcha. All right. New shear pin. So, just a matter of round off one end on the... Uh, on the grinder and then we can just punch it in. The pin shouldn't be, you can see, right, the pin shouldn't be any wider diameter than the inside of the lead screw covers if you've got covers. If it sticks out a bit that doesn't matter, quite a wrong, just as long as it doesn't touch that. You can tell it's sad they have, people have got their lawnmowers going, the dogs are barking, but anyway we'll rustle up this video. Just put a chamfer on one end, a paper, what you need. Okay, so everything's lined up. Got our little shear pin. Lock him in. Right, easy as that. That'll stay there, that won't move. The, uh, the load of the shear action on it will keep it in position and we're good to go. Simple as that. So we're back in action now. Everything's uh, turning like it should be, so that's it. Job done. So if you ever do break a lead screw shear pin, that's the easy way to, to fix it. Just, as I said, use the carriage with the half nuts engaged to pull the lead screw back into position and uh, put in a new pin. Yeah, easy as that. Okay, that's it. See you next time. Cheers.